there have been some steps to addressing the environmental crisis. Uh, the Paris uh, agreements of last December have finally gone into effect officially. The provisions are inadequate, but they're at least something and a basis for going on. It had been hoped that the negotiations would lead to a verifiable treaty, but that goal was not attained. It's only a voluntary agreement, much weaker, of course. The reason for this was clearly understood. It was actually reported in the press, though not prominently enough. The reason was very simple. The Republican Congress would not accept binding commitments. So there is no verifiable treaty, only something much weaker, a matter of no slight importance and virtually no comment. It's actually an astonishing fact if you think about it, that a major political organization in the most powerful country in world history is literally dedicated to destruction of much of life on Earth. Now that might seem to be an unfair comment, but I don't think it is. Uh, right now, <laughs> we're in the midst of the quadrennial electoral frenzy uh, think about the Republican primaries, which recently ended. In the Republican primaries, every single candidate denied the facts about climate change. There was one exception, uh, the guy who was supposed to be the sensible moderate, John Kasich. He conceded the facts, but said we should do nothing about it, which is even worse than denying them. Uh, that's 100%. The winning candidate it calls for more use of fossil fuels, including coal plants, the most destructive. He also calls for dismantling regulations, refusing funds to developing societies that are seeking to move to sustainable energy, and in every possible way, accelerating the race to disaster. Uh, when you consider the stakes, it's a fair question whether there has ever been a more dangerous organization in history than today's Republican Party? I think the answer is no. And, and worse still, there is no commentary on this. Right through the primary campaign, very little since, that astonishing blindness as the Lemmings march to the precipice, in fact, extends well beyond. So in the past few years, there's been extensive and typically euphoric coverage of the prospects for 100 years of energy independence, given new technology for exploiting fossil fuels. Occasionally, there's comment on the local impact of fracking, uh, but scarcely a comment if you can even find one, in fact, and pointing out that the euphoria amounts to an enthusiastic call for the sixth extinction to swallow us up at will. Uh, similarly, the growing threat of nuclear disaster barely elicits a mention. Uh, the two most important questions in human history on which the fate of the species depends are virtually missing from the extensive commentary on choice of leader for the most powerful country in world history. 